Hello, my name is Paul Falcão and this is a seminar about doing ray marching in Material Maker. I've been interested in computer graphics since I had my first PC and I started watching demos around 92, 93. Demos were amazing. I really loved demos. I started around that time doing some graphic programming, doing demos in effect and some 3D programming. Around 2000, 2001, I became interested in doing ray tracing, especially path tracing. This knowledge would be very useful for my computer graphics hobbies a few years later. In 2001, I also started to work. I didn't get time to dedicate myself so much to computer graphics. My job is server-side programming. It has nothing to do with computer graphics. I just do computer graphics for fun. In 2008, IQ, Inigo, Quiles, a demo scene coder, made an amazing procedural image using just 4 kilobytes of code. That's only 4096 bytes. With that release, there was a text file where in one section you could read. The real deal, this is some CPU remarching on a big 3D scalar field. No rasterization nor primitive intersections are used. There is a big Mac function that tells the distance to the closest surface at any 3D point in space. You can evaluate the function to guess how much you can safely advance before eventually hitting any surface. And so take the step. I call this rendering with distance field. I wonder what is the official technical name for it. After reading this, I realized how ray marching was done. And it was revolutionary for me, especially because although this image was done using the CPU, GPUs could already run pixel shaders, and it was possible to run this algorithm in a single pixel shader, running a hundred times faster than on the CPU. I thank IQ for opening a new world for me. Suddenly, I was able to do amazing things with just a few lines of code. Truly amazing. At that time, I used a program called RenderMonkey to make ray marching. I made hundreds of experiments. I was amazed. Around 2010, browsers were able to run shaders using WebGL. Some time later, GLSL Sandbox by Mr. Doe was born. It was the first website where you could write shaders in the browser and share them. Lots of people started to do shaders and sharing them and learning from the work other people have done. After some time, IQ released Shader Toy, like we know it today an amazing place to share shaders. Lots of very smart people start doing amazing stuff there, and the rest is history. And you can ask, what all this has to do with Material Maker? Well, I loved shaders and node-based programs, and around 2015, I was planning to do a web application that used nodes to make shaders, in a way that was possible to do ray marching using nodes. Coders would contribute with new nodes, and artists could use the nodes to create art. The interface was going to be inspired by VRXOID, a demo scene tool for making procedural demos using nodes in the form of stacked operation. But kids, work, I never had time to continue the project. From time to time, I would search the web looking for node-based programs like the one I was going to make. Early this year, in one of my searches, I found a program called Material Maker, where you could use nodes to generate shaders. It was very simple to customize the nodes code and create new ones, and it was very flexible. So it was very similar to what I wanted to do. I started to talk with the developer Rodzilla about my original idea and how close Material Maker was to what I wanted to do. I wanted Material Maker to be used not just for materials and textures, but for everything. A everything maker, where people could also share nodes and create a great ecosystem. We still don't have everything maker with their share functionality, but material maker as is is amazing. You will see. People who like procedural stuff, coding, and the node-based approach will love material maker. Well, at least I do. I have to thank Rodzilla for the support. He even helped me before this presentation, adding new functionality needed for it. Thank you very much, Rodzilla. So, Material Maker is an open source tool based on the open source Godot game engine. Material Maker can be used to create textures procedurally 
using the graph of GLSTL node. This new texture is a resolution independent pixel shader composed by the tool using the GLSTL code from the nodes that the graph used. The pixel shader can be copied to shader toy and it runs. You can also have steps that render the texture to an image and you can also apply transformation to images using nodes. Material Maker is very flexible and it's possible to do much, much more than just 2D textures. I use it for ray marching. So we will start by downloading Material Maker. There are several, several, several options to download Material Maker. Um, this is the official one. Okay. Um, but here it's uh, the, latest, the la latest version is 0 0.92, and uh, we need some additional features, so we don't we will not use this version. Uh, but uh, a few days or when when the developer Rodzilla released the new version, the 0 0.93 will will have all the functionality that. Uh, you need for this seminar. Um, so we will use the GitHub uh, latest release. As as I said, this is an open source program made with uh, uh, Goda. Um, We have, you have to download this dev desktop builds. By the way, you also need to be registered on JIT to download this build, okay? I think these kind of builds are only available to registered users. You don't need to be affiliated with the project or anything, but you need to be registered on Git to, to download And now you have to, this is a zip file, you can just unzip the file wherever you like. Um, we also need for this seminar uh, my additional notes. So, but I had a last minute problem uh, at my website, which is back to the pixel. I couldn't update my, my website, uh, so it's still like this but in the future in the near future I hope it will look like and um, it will have this this new item which is just a very very simple web page and here you have a zip file just download the zip file and you can put the zip file wherever you like as long as you know where the files are, okay. You have to unzip it, and inside there are my my custom notes. So this is Material Maker. Uh, Material Maker is a node-based program where you could you can put nodes in the in this space. Nodes are in this uh, tree. Uh, you can also add nodes using the right mouse bug button and saying uh, the name of the node. Okay. Um, you can also drag here the 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 output and 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 uh, release the button and we'll show the nodes that are compatible with that with this output okay but uh, let's start with this node so this is a, a node that you cannot delete uh, this is material maker so it's made to it was originally made to do um, this uh, materials that can be exported to uh, unity and real and of course to go dot um, and uh, if I just start dragging something you will see what will happen um, you can't see anything 
because okay after if I press here okay you'll see a 3D model with this but every node also do this this every node has um, a preview and the preview uh, it's also a GLSL um, it's also GL, GLSL code then it's already made but you can even modify it um, so to show just press the output so nodes can have inputs and outputs uh, for example this is a star you can drag to change the values so let's start uh, making a simple node simple 2d node let's use this star um, show the output at a circle show the output and now you can combine them with blend for example okay and it's combining the two so every, every output you can um, also export to shader toy and uh, let me show how you can do that you add a debug node show shader and this shader you have you just have to copy paste it to shader toy and it works and do a new shader paste it here runs and here you see so back to material maker um the yeah. Let me see other things that I can show to you. You can also so nodes have different output types. Uh, this in gray it's uh, a value. This uh, green are um, images, and you can also have a sign sign distance sign distance functions which are actually like this because this is a float and it is also a float but it has a different type of uh, visualization um, this is a representation of a two-dimensional sign distance function uh, a sign distance function represents the distance to the surface of the object so in 2d this white is zero represents zero and here you have negative values and here you have positive values and you can also combine these functions I will you actually use the alt key to have a more precise uh, value mod modification another interesting thing like that some of the values you can directly use here which is also very very useful and you can now join this is a boolean operation let's just delete this Okay. You can see what is happening here. What is happening is uni uh, joining the two shapes. You can do a subtraction, for example. You can do other other kind of functions. Another interesting thing is to create. Uh, or to modify uh, an existing uh, an existing node so 
for example this node you can press Control w we have or go to make this make selected nodes the editable and you press here and now you can edit the node let's start by doing another one custom shader by default is completely empty you press ctrl w to edit it and now you have parameters and the inputs and you have the outputs so i want to just make a circle okay it's an operation that already exists but it's just for showing you let's make let's call it circle and uh, the circle have a size okay this is the minimum value and the maximum value this is the step between how much you want to change between the two let's set some precision here and the default value this control is the visual controls that you can see here okay if you do apply you will see now you have a slider there okay this node will have no inputs okay uh, as an output you will generate um, a grayscale image um, you also have these tabs here where you can add uh, the code but if it's really simple you can just add the code here so let's start by programming the node which is you will use the length and this is very important you use the dollar uv the dollar uv has the input has the coordinates where you are so the, we are doing a pixel shader right so for every pixel in your shader you have to know where you are the x coordinate and the y coordinate the uv have that values if you do if you do uv dot x you have the x you do uv dot y you have the y and so forth the, here we will see we will know the length um, to the center and we will remove the size so you access the variables using using again the dollar dollar uh, in this case size so by the way here this is the the name of the variable and so i can call it for example size lowercase and here is the name that will be displayed and you can even add a, a description this is the parameter uh, type there are lots of uh, this kind of types apply okay doesn't show anything let me see why so that uv oh here is size lowercase okay so it works so for, for debugging it's not very convenient if you want to debug you have to use the debug um, node or we have put here the debug you will show the shader here you'll copy paste to the shader toy for example and in shader toy you will see you will try to figure out the error so it's not very user friendly but uh, you can have you have this workaround another way is to uh, run run compile the project in uh, go dot and uh, 
the, that way you will have a console where you you can see the errors so you can see it here that uh, the value is changing this visualization starts here at zero zero that's why it's here um, so we have so for this visualization to be correct um, we have to change this value exactly mm -hmm. and we probably want the inverse of this so let's use dot zero minus this yeah um, you can also use for example do a hard edge so let's see if this is more than zero we will display a color let's call it color a um, if it's not we will call it color b okay um so but we are not outputting a color but we can output a color like here now it's a a vector um let's try to see if it works i also have to add parameters the parameters that i just created color a color a color okay white can be white this is the default value color b Color B, color will be black. So inside white, outside black. Let's see. Inside, if it's, it's the opposite. So, uh, let's try if it works. Uh, no. What we can do to check what is the error in this is to again copy the code to shader toy that said a debug node and show shader copy now you you won't see but let me compile oh dimension mismatch i know it's because the color has four attributes it also has alpha and this color only have three attributes so um, actually the output color only has three so this is a float this is a vector three this is a, this is a vector four a vector two a vector three this is a vector no vector two also and this is a vector three as output okay they are two the same but the input is different so these are types for each type you have an input in here and an output so for grayscale for example you have a float output and the input is uh, in the uh, vector 2 uv for the color you also have the uv uh, to the input the coordinates but you output a vector 3 the color red green blue for this one you output red green blue and alpha okay uh, so if you if you would pick this it will run for example but I we will stick to this one for this one 
it's for generating 2D sign distance functions. So you will have a float 2 as input and a float as output with this the distance to your object for each point in 2D space. This is the same but in 3D assigned to distance function in 3D receives a vector 3 okay the x y and z coordinates z coordinate and uh, outputs uh, the distance also float this is a variation that i will probably explain later and this one receives is for making textures it receives a uh, three coordinates the vector three where you are in space and for each one of them you uh, say the color at that point in space so it's vector 3 as input and a vector 3 as output so each one of these types is basically a signature where you have a function in a type in input and a type in output you can also define new ones if you want uh, downloading the, the the source and and adding um, new types which which I have already made but now we don't need to do it it's very very simple uh, so back to this example um, the problem is that color has four attributes as a vector four and we are outputting a vector three so we can cut that by doing this x y z apply it and now we don't see anything okay here it is yeah it works nice and you can change of course the colors that's some very bad colors okay like the japanese flag um here is the so this is not a texture okay what we are making are um, shaders so the output from here is a shader so it doesn't have a resolution right um, by the way we can also add some controls here so for example for the size we can add uh, let's try a different control oh it's this one radius exactly so we can now just use this so we have made a new node okay and you can now save this node we could also add for example the position but for now i think you understand how it works so um here you can you specify the this code this code will be in line when the material maker generates the shader but uh, for more complex things you, you will have to use also these tabs so for example uh, we can we could also code could also remove this from here put here in the main code um, and use this so each instance of of the code would have uh, a specific name so i will explain what i mean um, this is a, is a vector tree a like color for example equals to this but, and we can't just put this here okay we have to i don't remember i think it's nine so let's check the documentation Manual. 
it's here defining a shader node okay so here you can see the documentation and it explains uh, so the main code this is a problem the main code you can't just use a normal variable you have to use this name underscore uv so let's continue our example okay let's transform this into a variable so all this code will run uh, if you have lots of code here instead of doing just one line you can put the code here but you have to be careful because uh, your variable must have that syntax so it's uh, it's a vector tree name uv let's see if it's exactly oh and the dollar sign before name uv and then you do an underscore or something and put the variable name so color out for example okay now you can use okay let's check this and you can use this here and it still works and this way you can structure your code and so let me see okay another interesting thing now we have this our custom node you can also uh, use control d to duplicate the node okay and you can now blend this for example and drag let's see the output okay it's between the one and the other let's change to colors this is <laughs> odd no i want it red again more pretty um but we can also create a group using control g okay and now we are inside the group so the group has parameters and um, we can link parameters to this for example add a parameter and give it a name we have to add an output right called this guy is a color color okay link it here and you press here to go to the parent and now you have the graph so but you can't edit anything right so you have to make these variables as parameters so you can have a very cool way of linking the parameter so this is the size of the first circle let's call it size a and let's use create another for this other size call it size b and we can also use for example the the color color okay color a still also building to this and you have color b color b color b let's see you go back to parent so this is the first 
second. Oh, they are the same. No, the size is different. Oh, it wasn't link for some reason. Okay, so now I have this and this, and you create a node that is composed of other nodes. So you can see this is very flexible. Okay, um, and we haven't still touched the inputs, right? So you can also have inputs and use that inputs here. Oh, a very cool thing. You can use time. There is a special variable called time. Um, let use a sign function over time. So if I put just time, time is always increasing. So we uh, we have to do a sign function or with time as input. So the sin function goes from minus one to one, and we want this value to go around zero dot one. So we multiply this for by zero dot one, and uh, now it's between minus zero one and zero one. Now we add something like zero point two or zero point five, for example, and yeah. You see now that the value is changing over time. So yeah, you could export now this to Shader Toy, and um, you already have a shader, an animated shader. You need to, it will work. Um, so. Another, let me see, okay, for now I think it is, there is some, uh, not here, but here, because these tabs, oh, I would need to explain more in detail exactly what they are for. So, now we will start doing some 3D stuff. Uh, for that, you will need um, so you will need my notes. Um, well, not exactly. If you want, you can also use 3D uh, stuff as is. So, but the visualization is this one. So, this is a uh, sine distance function of a sphere, right? And it shows this visualization. But if you want a different type of visualization, you need to load one of my nodes or you can make your own uh, ray marching um, node. Okay, this is one of that. This making, so making a ray marcher node uh, is something that you can do in the tool without this just GLSL code. Okay. Well, show that to you um, so why does material maker have this 3d sign distance functions well because you can uh, use sign this sign distance functions uh, example, let's add here box box is here and we lose boolean in the two, okay. Okay, now we have this, and you could now use this as you can all. They have he had material maker has this node to use. This has basically the what. Uh, weight of of the 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 three D um, function. This is the normal. 
and this one I don't remember but I don't use this I made a uh, different note so this is the part that is new you have to go here load selection and uh, let's use my desktop you have this so the, if you unzip the file you will have this file so each one of this is a material maker selection basically uh, for for example that node that we created previously uh, we could save the node by by making one of these uh, files here by going file save selection okay um, we have to be careful because if uh, the node was not modified if the node was modified to you by you um, the, the the file will only save a reference to this standard library okay but if you do control w and it did something it, the the it saves the code also okay the same is happens when you save the, um, the material so if you save if you alter something in one of these nodes when you save the material the, the, the your code will also be in the material unless it's um, it's one of the official operations okay so let's so this new functionality adds the possibility to save your node a custom node that you made and load that but for you can also use copy paste for for example even this node that is built in uh, let me just modify something and then I use Control C, and uh, if I open, uh, if you paste this to a test editor, you will. I think you have we have a comment something. Yeah, I have a comment here. Let me see if I can double click to write a comment. I have actually never used this. Yeah. So yeah. So this is the code, and it is. You can, if you know, do you can edit this, okay, outside, and if you paste, the node will, will appear. So you can, for example, just um, it's a JSON file. You can um, copy this JSON file from a normal text editor, and when you do Control V, the node will a node will will appear appear here. So it's very, very nice. Um, okay, let's delete this and load my note. Load selection. So it, that is why it's called selection because you are saving a selection. It's not not just a note, but the whole selection. It saves the the, the nodes and the connections between them. So, if, for example, if I do this and do file, save selection, it will save a, a JSON file with uh, all the nodes and and the connections and and the code of the nodes that were modified. Okay. So I will now. I have three different mm, remarching, but. I would like to make more and you can also make more. Let's start with this one. So this node is a custom mode that I have made. I can show you here the code. Um, it has some inputs which are the sign distance functions and the 3D textures that I will explain later. Uh, the code you can see here that we use that uh, here we are, we are not using main code, we are using just instance functions. Okay, the instance function has need to hit, needs to have a suffix 
or a prefix with a dollar name okay and I didn't use global functions here um, so the, this little checkbox is very important because if you check this uh, the input will be used as a function so this is very important for um, and actually I, I think it's a very rare functionality in node-based systems um, because it's different when you receive a value nodes can receive values that's normal okay every node system has that uh, you can receive values from inputs right but um, here is different you are uh, actually calling a function you're saying that well this is a function um, and it, that is very useful and that way you can use sign the inputs can be a function like for example the sign distance function or the color that is a 3d texture and, and and that's it so this particular node right uh, only has two objects for simplification the object a and the object b the object a oh by by the way it already shows something because you can apply default values so it's showing this and you can uh, change here let's use the alt you can use change here the values cameras where you look at camera distance the specularity of the object oh, how much is okay zero and in this case one okay where is the sun um, this is a very cool input that you can specify uh, you can do a you can have an input that will be converted into a color gradient that you can edit so you can for example i use this for the sky which is very handy and you double click and you have a more preci precision very very cool this is the ambient light if you want more ambient occlusion or not um, if you want shadow but it's a very basic uh, note nothing very special um, so let's substitute this by this by our sign distance function that we were building here so now you have start things start to get interesting um, and you can now start to build your your sign distance function so let's start with boolean right uh, we have a boolean here no at this point i don't think the visualization helps very much so because the, the visualizations are made for textures and here we are not using textures so we would have to have a different type of visualizations like something more like this okay so this is a visualization from this node um by the way this generates an image and you can also uh, transform the image uh, let's see for example blur okay so it bakes something like this this into a yeah for example this blur bakes this into this resolution by the way the, the resolution is fixed for x and y this is a, 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 a not a normal thing but when you export it in shader toy everything will be okay so the blur function uh, f first is this this node receive uh, an image as input so the green is images uh, and not puts another image so let's continue so you have also
We have also different types of unions. So one of the most used union is this small bullion. Very cool, we can all sorts of things with this. Um, you can, for example, add now a translation to the sphere. This model in here. can also animate this with time again probably too slow let's increase the speed and add And you can continue to play with the, the with the shader. So this is using the default. So th this has this node has two objects basically. One object is this one that we override, and the other object is the floor, right? So if, for example, we had uh, uh, for example, a box, and we play here. So the box probably isn't being shown. Oh, there it is, the box. <laughs> um, yeah, you can now use two objects if you want but we will stick to this floor another thing that you also have is 3d textures okay so let's use for example um, this pattern it's purple the purple are 3d textures okay yeah, now every point in second Use different combinations. This is a very cool node to make. Yeah. Multiplying. And you can, another very cool node is you can use uh, colorize. Yeah, so to do. To do here um, a modification of the colors based on this color gradient. Okay. Let's remove the time. We can also, for example, um, animate the camera using the same variable time so it's seen let's make the camera spin around the object so scene time let's back away a bit all a little and so i want we don't want to spin very fast right so Time now it's cosine. Yeah, probably it's two. Let's back up further away. 
go too far away. Let's use four. Okay. Translate. We will remove now this from now. Don't need it. Let's just, let's just use the object. Um, what you can um, well you have lots of different functions example this one so so cool so in in uh, material maker uh, the functions are periodic so So they repeat because you want to make textures, so you want that property right. Uh, but I made a, I use the code for that is not periodic. So that's loads one of my again one of my lo my nodes, which is text 3D. No, it's generator Nicket it was from user Nicket from shader toy let's use for example simplex on the simplex nodes with octaves yeah so it generates this moon <laughs> yeah can I have scale let's use the alt key to transform the values we have scale here let's this is one, the number of iterations, persistence, brightness, contrast, and its clamp if it was false. So values can be over one, but it's not very good to do that. Unless you do some special things. Um, Let's go back to the pattern. Uh, yeah, so let's try something here. Um, let's multiply your sine wave, sine here. Let's add, add, uh, enlarge here the preview. Um, you can zoom. I don't think there is a scale for scale. Let me see. Oh. Scale. No, but I, I made one. Again, these nodes are very simple to make. If you, for example, this scale node, if you see the code, it's just this. Nothing very special. So it's very easy to, to do nodes. Uh, I. I'm doing this seminar because I want people to share notes. Uh, I would like here to have an integrated community uh, using Material Maker where you could share your notes and people would, would uh, use other people's notes because there are very, very smart people up there that I'm sure that could make great great notes and other and designers could use that notes like i explained it in the beginning of this seminar so okay this scale scales the note scales the pattern i'm now using here is the old key. Can use the Alt and the Control key to do this. Now I will use uh, one of my modifiers to the sign distance function. So you can have modifiers in the sign distance function. One of the modifiers that I like to use is distort by normal. So we will modify the weight the by the normal okay so this node receives what receives the the um, 
sine distance function. Okay, so now we don't. This is how much we are displaying scene and receive a pattern. So this can be this pattern. If you do this, yeah, you are modifying. I think it's very cool. But if let's change here, for example, the colors. We are now modifying the. This is when it starts to look very nice. Oh, see what's happened. So sign distance when you some modifications uh, are not make the sign distance function just an approximation. Uh, and for when that happens, you have to correct. So when I may when I make nodes that need correction, I, I add here some manual uh, correction. By the way, also the the shadows and the uh, occlusion mapping they are also fake. They are not true shadows. And, so okay, and shadows are also they use an approximation based on sine distance functions, but because sine distance functions now are not correct, we have to remove sometimes remove the the occlusion. So if you after the correction, okay, you don't need this amount of. So if you can just lower the correction. It's best always when it's zero, okay? Because if you add here a value, it uh, the the shader will become slower. Um, we can also have, for example, another sphere. Duplicate this sphere. The join function. Okay, smooth boolean. And now translate oh it's not correct it's this one okay i would like more this if it was not nodes but it was like works like it's a, like a stack based approach i don't want this i want smooth boolean Translated, yeah. Yeah, you can also do a subtraction. And you can make some procedural, some very cool procedural elements here. Um, for example, if you change here for something like this, look what happened. Um, we are now modifying and creating completely uh, a completely different object. And you can still all this can also be animated, of course. Uh, let's see more things. Okay, for example, the um, the object that uh, you see in the presentation. I can now do that. By the way, this is deformation by normal. Before I made that object, let's use another kind of deformation. Which is deformation not by normal, by but uh, it's well, it's also by normal, but uh, it doesn't only affect weight. Uh, it's this one we just replace. And but by the way, you can have several these nodes. So, for example, I could have another node here. Showing the two, well, let's make it okay. okay. Here 
and here, here, and now you, now you have two exactly nodes, but now we will use this one instead of the other one, just you to compare the two. Um, this also needs some correction. So this can generate uh, distortions that are not connected to the structure itself. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. This also is always connected, right? Because it only affects weight. Yeah. So let's load the examples that I have made previously. Um, so similar to the one we have made before, I made this chair it's exactly the same, but with the with different with different um, texture three D functions, right? So we have this, then it scales. I use brightness and contrast to change this then it uses the original noise function it blends the two and then the, the, the this output goes to the distortion and we can do a brightness and contrast colorizes brightness and contrast and then the same rotation is applied to the texture into the object now, so, so you can instead of we instead of the camera being rotated, is the object that is being rotated. I think it's very it's nice. You can okay, this is changing the colors, of course, but uh, here you can change. So this is the distortion. That uh, it's not based on the weight, it's based. Uh, it's not based on the weight, um, but it's based on the normal. So uh, the, the distortion is not just plus a number; it uh, uses the normal at that point. Okay, to distort. Um, we can. This is a sphere and a box. You can change here the blending between the two. You can change the translation. This is a cool thing. And uh, with the box size. Wait for. You can do some really cool procedural things this way Th there is there was a, a, a node that doesn't exist yet because you can't made it with glsl um with that i think was was relatively easy to do in in godot um by the way, sorry about my English. Sometimes I screw up <laughs> in saying some names. Well, English is not my native language, so sorry. Ignore, please. Uh, so in Godot, um, I think it was simple to do because the the node would bake the object into this uh, object into a real object with polygons. Uh, it is relatively Please stay for to do uh, because you can assign the colors to the vertex and uh, use um, marching cubes, for example, an algorithm that transforms this kind of this kind of things that are not made of polygons into something with polygons. Of course, that the resolution for for example for this kind of model would have to be very high. But uh, yeah, I think it was cool. You could export this object and use it in another program. We could print it. 
it would be very very nice uh, but it's something that you can't do directly in the program it's a node that has to be made inside a do um, so let's continue another some let me see other examples that i have here um, See this one. Fine. Oh, this one is also similar to what we have already done. Um, yeah, it's the same thing with different textures. Okay. Here, translate. Very nice. So only the, the texture changes. So you can play with this a bit. So for example, we can remove this noise. Okay, it uses the default and add um, add set. For example, uh, another noise. For example, let's see. Uh, the Nicket simplex when octaves. Always done here, okay? It's slightly different. Can start small. Plus. This is being distorted by normal. Let's change this and make a distortion instead of by normal. By normal, wait by normal, not by normal. What is this? Let me see. Remember. Is this the one? Whoa, oh, I forgot this. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's different now, you see. Now the, the object can... I have to apply some correction. Yeah, and remove the remove probably the end of the occlusion. Also, the shadows are not correct because shadows is but that, that, that's some slight. Um, some correction. So the correction, the 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 node uses the distortion level in conjunction with correction. To try to figure out the, the the necessary amount of correction in distance field. Okay, of course we can also change this. And this is subtraction. Okay. Put this as a larger sphere, small sphere that is subtracting. Okay. Do a union. Whoa. This was a very big rock. Yeah. Rock. Nice. <laughs> um So let's let me see another one. This is kind of old, but yeah. All right. Also, it's just kind of a donut. This use um, I haven't talked about this because um, the two D distance functions. Uh, let me show that to you. The 2D distance function. Um, you can use uh, 2D distance function to uh, make an other object. Doing, for example, a revolution uh, around the the 2D distance function. Okay, now it's rotating. Let's remove this. Okay, so for example, we have now we have a, a box here. Okay. This box, oh, 
I use this, I don't know why. And we scale, rotate this, and then we apply a revolution. So we uh, this node receives a 2D and then applies a revolution around the, the center, okay? Let me show what I mean by this. So this is the object that is rotating around this this axis. For this, for example, this this uh, node only revolves around uh, this axis, but we could change the node to do uh, to revolve around uh, other axes. Let me, for example, wait, look, change that. Show you that. So yeah, the code is very simple, as you can see. We do x y. Let's use example z and y. Let's change these coordinates. By the way, you you could, for example, put all this text in a variable, and one of the inputs is an enum, and the enum would be the several options that you could then use here uh, here okay okay i can show you that after uh, let me see yeah so this is the node this is being rotated so this object is being rotated like a a, a, a vase okay something like that around if you move here the, the, the center of the object of the 2d function this also applies this, this was probably just to get you don't need this section whoa centered It's just to make it rounder, probably. Okay. So, okay. So I wanted to show also different types of remarching. I have this one that uses a matcap image. Matcaps are those images. I can show you what do I mean by this. Basically, it's like taking an image of a sphere with reflection. Okay, you apply it here, and if you set, for example, direct, it will show the image. So in this, this is a sphere, so it's not very interesting. But if you do, for example, um, torus. Um, you can also do mix and try to mix blend between the two. You can do some nice things. Depends on the image, right? Let me see if I have um, another image here. Interesting one. Example this one. Okay. This is a node based, pro based program, so you can also modify <coughs> this image, like for example, brightness and contrast. So we can now reduce the brightness, increase it. You are now dealing with an image. Another another note, it's the it uses panorama images, HDR panoramic images. And 
and also have reflections. I, I used some reflections in this one. Um, let's load here an HDR. HDR are large. Are large. And this one has a 24 megabytes, something like that. Yeah. So you can see now some shiny reflections here. To shiny, probably. Okay. Now we can also apply a texture pattern. So that image that I showed in the presentation was made with this node. Um, we can let's just remove it, use the original sphere. But the difference is that uh, this has two objects. So the by the way, the this node, the default object, is not a is not a plane. Something different you can show. <laughs> this like a double a sphere split it okay um let's just concentrate this so yeah this doesn't have yet the controls for camera so it's difficult to adjust the camera and also to position the object but okay again this was made this is made to make textures, not ray marching. So yeah, we are just abusing here the potential of Material Maker. Um, so the difference is that now we will use... Um, we will we'll try to remove the second object. We could change the code, but... Um, we, will, we will just create a very, very small sphere. In order to, okay, this is the sphere. We will, no, it's inside. It doesn't exist. Okay, now we will only have the default object. Um, and this is a sphere. We will now load a plane. Wait, I don't see. I have a plane here. Let's see, generator, yeah, SDF, no, I don't, haven't made a one point, but you can also use the box, normal box for it. But it has some problems, so we will create one, it's a nice exercise. Custom shader, and we will just like to make plain, no parameters, just one output. Sign this in section 3D, where it's UV, UV dot epsilon. Let's see if it works. I think it works, but yeah, now you have a plane, a red plane, mm -hmm. with no parameters, just, just this code. Um, we could make it smaller by intersecting in with um, a sphere, so this is sign distance functions map.
again the dollar UV. So this is a formula for a sphere. Okay, now you have a small sphere. You can also you can make this a parameter. Call it size. Let's call it size. Size. Float mean max. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Just steps here. I like to have precision. Yeah. So we cannot change the size of this. So this is a plane intersected with the sphere directly in the code. Uh, let's make it moving so we don't see. And apply in this one. Let's apply a pattern. Okay. Have this pattern, uh, maybe with three or something. It can be zero. Um, and then we will combine this new object with uh, the sphere. Okay. This is a sphere, no, not this sphere. This is a 2D image of a sphere. This sphere, you will, can, again, you can just click on the output, drag, release, and you will see the, the operators that work on this output. In this case, this is the smooth boolean that I want. Okay. It's now. Can now doing nice cool um translate sphere yeah let's put some rotation on the camera. Could also animate this if you want it. Um, so I I also added in the example I also added some distortion. So for the distortion we need let's load the NICAT simplex noise. Oh, where is okay. okay. And uh, my distortion could be the distort. This one. Way too much. Uh, yeah. There are many shiny objects in the sky. Maybe we can replace it with a different image. Let me see. Okay, this one. I'm loading a different HDR image. Yeah. So, yeah, this is 
Now the object has a distortion. Um, by the way, we would have to. So the sun is at some point. I don't know where is the sun here in this image. It's. Let me see. Where is the sun here? Let's see the sun. Oh, here is the sun. So. But now I can see the object. So the sun is there, right? So we have to. We can align the specular. So the specular here is at zero, but we can align. Let's just remove the distortion. Um, translate the ball here. Uh, the reflection removes the reflection. And the, the, this sun and this fake sun should be aligned. So we have to move this sun so we can have a more, more correct, it's never correct, but a better fake. Okay, let's have this to have an exact. Why do I have still speed? I don't know. Is there a reflection? Yeah. I still need this. Yeah. More or less is this. Yeah. So now that the, the shadow is more aligned with the, the image. Um, we don't need this anymore. Zero. Let's continue. So here we have distortion. And use. And yeah. That was the video. Let's apply a sign function with time. Probably too fast. Hmm. Somewhere. Yeah, it's now appearing. Probably too slow. Yeah, this is nice. Oh, the, okay, it's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this was the effect on the presentation. Um, I also want I also want to, to show you um, a nice feature called custom joints. Um, no, well, custom unions, but. Uh, um, so that will use the 2D SDFs, like for example. So, how does it work? Um, or what do you want? What do you want to do? So this this is a, a union, um, normal union. Okay, it's one object or the other. This this uh, this is another one that makes it smooth. Uh, transition between one and the other um, but we can actually visualize this okay, let me show you some custom nodes uh, let's use the, an input no. to the input okay. and duplicate no Load selection, use uh, this visualization from EQ, IQ, sorry. Uh, can use this, yeah. Duplicate, then use the Y. So this, this is what it's doing, right? So 
the intersection between two objects maps into a 2D distance function. Okay, can be a little complex, but if you don't understand it now, one day you will understand it. I hope. Um, so this represents one object, and this represents the other object. So in a union, you have both objects. In a subtraction, um, you, you subtract one from the other in an intersection. We only have an intersection in this part from this object and this object. In a smooth boolean, this is happening, right? If you do this, it's exactly like this union, right? But if you do this, the distance between the two fields will become this. Okay? So we can use um the these to join object of of course right so if we can if you if we add here a sphere and no, let's use a cube sorry cube or box it's called a box box And another box, duplicate, control D, duplicates the element. We have to translate this box, translate, yeah, a bit, uh, and join the two. So we will now join these two objects. Um, we will join these two objects with this join. Um, but in a different way, with a custom, with a custom union. Probably union is the best word. I'm trying. Uh, so SDF custom union. Yeah. No, it's not this one. Load selection custom union. Oops, there was a problem here. But the the object it's not correct. Let me correct this. Let's load one of the examples. This is the one that I'm, I'm doing just to copy the object here. I will correct it after. Um, so the zip file it's wrong, I have to change it. Okay. By the way, now you don't have access to the, the zip file, but I will, after this seminar, I will tweet the zip file. Okay, and for some time from now it will be available on my website. So, these two objects. Can't see anything. I don't know exactly why. So this was what we were going to do. Yeah. So this uses the normal smooth boolean that we went to make a custom one. Isn't working. Let me see the code. Probably the code isn't correct. I hate this. I remember it was here. That's okay. Now it should work. Yeah. So it's exactly the same. We are doing exactly the same thing. We are, we are visualizing. We are visualizing here the union that that we are creating. This union is already made. So, but we can make. Uh, special uh, unions, okay? So, for example, instead of this, let me show what I mean. Um, let's use a normal boolean to use these two. 
and visualize it. So this is the standard union, right? Um, but we can, for example, everything that, that you draw here will appear uh, on the intersections. Let me see what I mean by this. For example, if you draw a sphere, uh, not a sphere, a 2D distance function of a circle, uh, let's call circle. No, it's not circle with width. I have to search here. It's with circle. Um, we can do another union between this. These two objects. Okay. And now we have an object here. Let's see what happens. Okay. Way too large object. But, okay. See? This object have appeared because I made... It appears because of the union between the two objects. It's a very powerful concept. It's really, really nice. Um, nice. So, um, let's translate. I hope there is a translate. Yeah, there is a translate for it. Let's change it to be more close to the... Yeah. So you can see what I'm talking about. So if you know, if we change uh, the intersections in, on every intersection, it will create this object in between. Yeah. You can make different shapes. You can make stairs. You can make whatever you want. Okay. It's very very nice. Okay, let's. We haven't even used a HDR image. That's it. Use the sunflowers for it. Better. So the box. Oops. Okay. Whoa. I don't know exactly what I'm doing here, but it's nice. So of course, you can all after it. You can continue to add, for example, deformation or, oh, for example, that, that probably this is a good time to show you that you can add, uh, so you can deform space. Okay, it's a very uh, a thing that many people do in this. Uh, can, for example, use a symmetry, an axis symmetry, not this symmetry, because this is a texture symmetry. We will, we will use SDF axis symmetry. Okay. And now the object is symmetrical in X, Y, and Z. Let me show what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. See? Okay. We can apply again another symmetry and so forth. Um, but I think you get the point. Again, this is very, very simple code. Nothing very magical here. Actually, the code it's, it's here on the enum values for the possibilities. It will replace this code with this variable mode. And you apply here, mode will be with the values. That we use here for changing symmetries, for example, if it was just x symmetry, y, x, mm. 
for example, this one. Let me here. Yeah. Can also after this we can scale. No. Yeah, we can we have scale. Oops. Now we will try to make some fractals. First load the render. Load an HDR image. Distance function box, and now we will apply some transformations. We will first translate box, okay. Then we will rotate the box. Then we will apply symmetry. Okay. Because we have this symmetry, the space is being. Um, we are just drawing uh, a box that says. Here, sin over time animate. Sign. Oops. Space is being um, folded, is being copied. So when you basically when you draw a box, you draw a box at the center, right? Uh, then you translate the center, you rotate, rotate the center, and then you mirror space, you mirror the space, so the box will be drawn everywhere because in these eight places. You, you, you will have the same coordinates after this symmetry. But we can continue to apply these transformations again. Right, so you can copy, duplicate, control D, go here, go here, go here. And yeah, we have more cubes. Let's make a smaller box. You can do it again and again. So this makes a fractal. Um, one kind of fractal that you can make. So instead of doing this over and over and over, we can use a custom node. This, so this node, this graph actually, this graph can be an input from another node. So this is where, again, Material Maker is extremely powerful in my opinion. Um, 
let's use the generic fractal. Yeah. So the transformations can't be these ones. Have to be. We are transforming. So this is a this is a texture 3D, but we are not using the texture 3D for texture. We are using the texture 3D for transformations. We will see. You will see what I mean by this. Because basically that's a float tree. So we have now we need a transformation, and for that we need to load um, this input. Yeah. So now there is no transformation. But we can start to apply here the transformation. So we can now translate. We don't have translate in text 3D. Translate. So again, I'm. You see what happened? Yeah. It's applying this transformation four times. Okay, let's go three, four times this transformation. Translating this object. Um, after this, you can also rotate, for example. Six times. Oh man, you would want. And the we can also apply um, symmetry here. Axis symmetry. So now, just so this, this one, yeah, they're starting to make nice fractal. See? It's, so the, the base object. In this case, is um, the box, but you can use a different one. For example, a sphere or a combination of objects. So the possibilities are endless. See? This sphere. Um, another very nice thing is that the way you join these objects can be uh, so this is fold and this is mean well but basically in the in fold you are just use you, you apply symmetry to space and here we are actually using multiple spaces and combining them uh, and you can also use custom okay and in custom we you can use custom to the unions. So for a custom to the union, um, let's load input to duplicate this. The Y can also use to the so the 2D and 3D unions are exactly the same code. This union, no, I don't remember the name.
in this case it was a this one but you could use a custom one right it's not exactly perfect because uh, let's use it again in the box yeah it has this nice join between some boxes and you can change all this rotate some cool objects can play with ambient lightning more reflection way too much reflection yikes okay nice so um she so was using the fractal um and well we could also use this to make a city using fractals uh i think i can leave that to you because this presentation is getting too long thank you for joining me sorry about the noise the background noise because i think this microphone it's not very good sorry but um, well you have my twitter is paulo falcao and um, if you like it, this follow me at twitter and talk with me i can also help you do more stuff uh, with material maker thanks